Man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the hour. Don't forget, folks, Basil does an outstanding show here every trading day, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, the opening call. Now, it's very easy to get Basil's newsletter, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You, go, you hit newsletters, and then you're going to see it on the left-hand side, two down. You can get the opening call for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 or 22%. And you get it for one full year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. And on top of that, Basil has about 15 archives out there so that you can understand exactly how he looks at the market each and every day and how you can ride that wave. Basil Chapman, how you doing? I'm doing well, thank you, Tom. How are you? Good, thank you. Good. So, yeah. what do we got with this market here? So, there are a couple of things that I'm looking at. Number one is, if you're looking at the Dow chart on the left, that's the daily, in the middle is the weekly, and the monthly is on the right, and we've got uh, another couple of days to go to wrap up the month of March. So far, the month of March has got uh, this long-legged doji-type candle. We'll see where it closes. But the weekly chart has thus far held this support level, I call this inside track, pro palin zone. It was a re zone for ages. Now it's been holding very nicely. And we'll see what happens. What I want you to do is to show you this. I, I discussed this with you before, but I think it's worth going through it again. Um, is it, there's a particular technique that I use. <clears throat> I call it the dark news cloud cover. Let me just see if I can get this place a little bit better than that. Okay, there it is. So I'm going to just shrink it a little bit so you can see. So this Chapman Wave Dark News Cloud Cover, I use it for the Dow. Every time that I've noticed the market starting to stall, for a very long time, there's been pretty much the same news. But very often, the market ignores that same news. And another time, it just takes it very seriously. I call that, when it makes highs, I call it the internal high and the residual high. Think of it as an earthquake and the aftershock. And I do the same thing at the bottoms. And you can see that it's been going on for years now. We've got these H-type patterns at the bottom. We, look, here it is back in uh, 20, uh, this is 2022. It makes an internal low, bounces up. The bad news comes in again, and it goes all the way down, makes a residual low. And it does that over and over. So this is the longest that we had gone sideways. This is from November of 22. I drew in here uh, Dark News Cloud, DNCC, for the Dark News Cloud cover, and was filtering over the mark. So it's like a dark cloud, and that cloud can suddenly, the sun can shine, or it's just a heavy, heavy downpour. Well, it stayed in this range for a very long time. Even within that, it made a little internal low and a residual low. That was in December, and then it was re retested again uh, a little later than that, and it ran to the top. Now what we've got is this internal, and now I'm going to expand this again so that you can see it a little bit clearer. Now what I've said is there's a chance that this internal low that was made right here on the 15th of March at 31,429, and I'm using the Dow, you know, it, not all the charts have the same pattern, but I'm using the Dow because it's something I follow okay. every single day. Yeah. Um, ran up and then it came back and it retested just three days ago Higher than that at 32 at 31,805. So my contention has been that there's a chance that that low that was made in October is such a low with with a huge rally that ran up to the highs that were made, and that this particular high was made on December the 13th, and the Dow 34,712, and the other indices were very close to that date. But every time. The market rallies strongly. We get this really bad news. In this last instance, it was the um, the banks. But my contention has been that we could have this rotational market that says that there's some strength, enough strength to say that this October low so far is going to be is going to hold. That's the way I'm looking at as it is right now. So that every time there's a big rally. That's when we get the bad news, but we keep making a higher lows. And just recently, we started to make low lows to the ones that we made in December and January, 
but they are still, when you think about the, the market and the, the seriousness of the news, I'm kind of impressed. So I just wanted to show you that uh, there's one way that I'm looking at the market, and I look at it as the internal low, and we've just made a residual low. If we take out this low that was made on the, what did I say, it was March the 13th, I think it was, uh, right here. Yes, March the 15th at 31,400. If we go below 31,200, all bets are off because that'll say whatever the news is now, it's serious enough that we could go down towards the low of October. All right. So what we're, just, so we're just saying is because of the, the news was so bad that the market still really held up, right? I'm saying two things. One is that because we, that October low was so serious and the spring to the upside was so powerful that now what we have is that all the lows that we seem to be making with all the bad news thus far has held very nicely above the October low. So, yes, that's the one thing. The other thing is that we've got a diversion in the indices themselves, and that's also very fascinating because, look, here's this Dow chart holding above the uh, weekly chart above the inside track propellant zone. If I go to the S&P, it's a slightly different chart. Whoops, I got to type S&P right there. There it is. So if I go to the S&P, it's a little different. It, it, it is holding, but it hasn't held as, uh, as well as, look at this. This is fascinating. The QQQ. Look how the QQQ is testing, has tested the left side low, a high of 313.38. This is the NASDAQ index 100. That was the high of the 2nd of uh, February. We just went to that. We're testing that. And the weekly chart is way above that inside track uh, repellent, which is now prop propellant zone. So it's really fascinating to me to see how this is unfolding. And, you know, I always look at the SMHs as, as a guide. And the SMH has just made this little double top. But they've run very nicely, so they take a bit of a digestive phase. So I'm looking at this and saying, if the rotation continues, and for subscribers, we trying to, I'm trying to find uh, areas that have held very well and that are almost, in, in, to a certain extent, independent of the overall market. So we're looking at a market that says, be very specific, look at certain areas. If they're holding well, that's a really good sign. And if they just, I mean, like the XLF, this is, it's, you can't just miss it. This is very serious stuff with the financials, you know, taking a, taking a dive like this. But if you look at the dreaded H pattern in the monthly, so far, the XLF has held above the October low of 2959. But it does have this H pattern. So I'm not being dismissive and I'm not being too sanguine by looking so positively at the market. But I think for me, there are some good signs. And we're trying to do that for subscribers so that we can be under the radar and have some nice trades. And folks, it's very easy to get Basil's newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go to newsletters. You're going to see it in the left-hand side. You see that opening call. You hit that button, and you are off to the races. Basil, you have a great one, safe one. And, of course, we look for a show tomorrow morning. Thank you, Tom. Same to you. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials down 87. NASDAQ's off 83. S&P's off 14 and a half. Come right back.